morning folks Kevin here well it's February 21st 2018 and it's like 60 degrees Fahrenheit this morning here and uh, so what I thought I'd do is while the snow is there's still some snow on the ground uh, I thought I'd take you through the uh, how we're managing the water at least part of the system that we're doing <clears throat> so right now pond one is behind me here that's that big kidney shape one you've seen in the videos before and uh, as you can see one second sorry that's all that way south and the woods are there so this this is the last pond to thaw it's at the highest point on the property we're at 450 foot elevation and right behind me here is a road right on the other side of those blue spruce trees and the chestnuts on the other side of them so what I'm going to do now is try and show you orientation of how we're trying to keep the water. Uh, we're trying to, with our swale systems, the things that we usually talk about is to slow it, to sink it, to sp spread it out, recharge the aquifer as well. And you've heard my talks about the canal systems for soil uh, capturing and for bioremediation as well. But today I just want to talk about the flow of water that's on the surface and how we're controlling it on the surface as much as possible. We're trying to work against gravity. Uh, gravity is trying to make it take it off the property really quickly and go right to my neighbors. And what I'm trying to do is rather takes it somewhat of a serpentine uh, direction uh, throughout the property. And I have more work to do in the future to gather even more water. So we have a pretty good chunk of property so we can collect a lot of water in this, in this uh, cold temperate climate zone where there's lots of rainfall and lots of snowfall. So right now the snow is melting since we're having this warm spell come through. So I'm going to turn the camera on and show you some of the, the features. So over this direction here, the sun's coming up in the east over here. This is the most eastern tip of uh, the Pond 1. Behind me there is the row road. We, have, we own half of that road since it's our own private road. And up here is the main road. And that's a little bit higher elevation than Pond 1. So the water wants to come down. There's a little bit of a berm <coughs> where the... Uh, blue spruces are and in between all the blue spruces that's all comfrey in there which isn't uh, noticeable yet and then the water comes down <coughs> and you see it's a little bit pooled by the <coughs> excuse me by this uh, uh, flowering crab apple and I'll be working on this to try and make it a little bit easier but here's our first little spillway from the uh, most northeastern part of the property and since it's it's relatively small it, there isn't much water flowing there. It hasn't melted the surface of this of the snow or, or of the ice, but there is just a small trickle right there coming. Now, as the water comes off the crown of the road and comes down into each one of these spillways, there's this real long swale system. So the base of the swale uh, Probably you can see where Hank is there. I'm not sure where, where, uh, where, the, where that tree is right there. We go three times that distance, and there's a, there's a point at which the, the, there's a drop-off, and we go to another lower level. So we actually have a swale system that has two different levels, but they have uh, diversion systems that we pull the property more south and more west. So this swale drains from the crown of the road, comes south that way south and and I'm sorry south and east because the slope of the property goes this way it goes uh, it gets lower as we get to our house way down there that's the natural slope of the property so it's going to head in that direction and we're pulling it back this way from the crest of the road there pulling it up going uh, going more easterly direction and this swale system dumps into Pond one. So it's we're utilizing we're utilizing the the, the level line, but we're pulling it in an, in a uh, direction so we can keep as much of the charge, uh, so we can soak as much of the water into the area. Now here's one of the diversions in this swale. 
and you'd see it's all pretty much stagnant. There's just a slight trickle flow. Now underneath this whole area are hugelkultur pits. So they're just completely topped right off right now. And you can see where the fruit trees and all, their roots are, the, the, the crown of the roots is about three foot to four foot above the water table level here so that they can reach the roots down, if desirable, one of my neighbors. <laughs> they can reach the roots down to hit, hit the, uh, the, the water system, but also they aren't gonna get waterlogged or, or sogged. You can see again the, the depth here. And here we go. And again, this is coming from the road much further west and I don't know if you can appreciate it. It's a slight trickle here, but it is flowing. It's flowing in this direction towards the east, even though the property slopes to the west. So that's really important. And another way that we're controlling it, so we got those large culture pits below where we're walking. Every place around here, there's large culture pits. Then, this, but the soil also holds a tremendous volume of water. So this is all a little bit over a foot thick of wood chips, this whole area. This is one of our, which was just a garlic bed for quite a while, going right down where this tree is. And that's all compost there. Then all wood chips on this side. Same thing right over here. So that what we're doing is we're slowly building soil with the wood chips that we can get available. So this is just trying to protect this bed. And there's another bed there. And as you can see, lots and lots of wood chips. And we just passed, let me see, so far we got one, two, three. So that's the third swell that's, that's, that's trying to redirect it, heading the water back towards pond one. And this is the fourth swale here. All of them connect to the top swale except for this one. This one it goes down and it drains off this end. It's a pretty much a mess here and it goes to pond two. And we'll get down there in just a moment. But again, below me here is about one to one and a half foot deep of wood chips down in here. And uh, We'll be working on this system. And Hank right there, he's standing on some of the wood chips. And this is one of the, the mounds that we walked down before. And this is all the first food forest. I'm sorry, the second food forest. And here we are. We can see the swale system right here. So this is still the, the, the first height. So we have the crown in the road coming off. I don't know if you can appreciate it, right along there is where the comfrey is, and that tends to soak it right down in. They've got really nice deep roots along those blue spruce. They bring it in, they hit their first mound, it's got to soak into this. Whatever goes through each one of our little break areas, it's really not much of a spillway, but it's a little break in the high mounds, and then it comes down into this swale. And we have another mound here. So this is all designed to charge that, those huge pool culture pits. All right, we'll come down here for a moment. And this is the level. So here we are at, at looking at this, uh, this spillway here, where my neighbors go by. This spillway, I'm sorry, this swale system right here. And you see it gets really super thin here. And then it drops off here. And so that's a separate one that drains from the, from the crown of our driveway, our main access road down there. And we'll go down there in just a minute. But you see there's all these little breakaways. They're like little spillways that go through here. But the breakaways are designed in such a way that, uh, or tiny spillways, they're designed in such a way that they easily dump into the spill, into the uh, swale systems and they don't actually allow the roots to get sogged down because they're so much higher. Even in that small area there, if you look at the height there, there's a three foot difference between the, the from, from the root crown here 
in the base of that swale. There's only about a foot difference right here. So this is all designed to direct the water going in the opposite direction of the, of the contour of the property. We're pulling it back in this direction each time and bringing it back up into the woods here. Now, when we get down here and to orient you, that's the grapevine trellis right there. Here's all the red raspberries along in here. And that lower spillway right, the, right here, so we have the, the lower, apologize, I can't get over there and I'm sorry about the wind. We have the swale system that drains the crown of the road at the point where, the, where, it, where it's at the top of the driveway, right up over there. It comes down, works its way down this swale system, comes through this spillway here. This spillway here, you can see the rate of flow right here. Maybe you can see it, I'm not sure how well this shows up in camera. But it comes down, it stays wide where we go across the drive through. So this is a drive through area. And this is the area that I've got to rework because we're building up so much soil since I don't mow this area other than twice a year. And the water goes into another spill, uh, uh, swale system. So this is the second one. So as we come down about uh, 50 feet down the driveway, we take the runoff from the, from the driveway and we take everything that's collecting off of this part of the property, drop it into the swale system. There's a mound on either side. Now this I'll be talking further about. This is our raspberry bush line. It's about a 300 foot line that we've got. This is the first part of it. The rest of it goes around behind me. So this is a swale system here. And this is one of the first soil collection spots that we, that we have because I don't know if you could see, we let everything grow up in here so well. Lots and lots of leaves break down in here over the seasons. I had made this so that I could uh, mow along in here and make it real easy to harvest the raspberries, but it's not ideal. I'll be working on that further. Now we have another breakthrough, the raspberry bed here, and there's the compost pile right over there. That's an area where we do all the composting. That's the horseradish bed, that dark line right there. And here's a breakthrough that we <laughs> just ran through. And it's only a small amount of water that works its way down in here. And we can see, here it goes, goes into this swale system. Keep walking our way around here. And then we deviate and turn to the next swale system. So this drains into the next swale system. Now each one of these swale systems at this side, the more eastern side of the property, gets deeper as, we, as the swale goes to the east. Because again, the slope of the property wants to go that way, so you have to cut into the earth deeper in order to do it this way. So this drains the whole area that we're doing composting. So that moisture makes its way down in through this little breakway. Now this is the beginning of the raspberry bushes right here, working its way around. Makes its way into this system, and since it's, not, it's level, the water after a rainfall will just fill up this whole swale system. It won't go above the entrance point way over there where the driveway is. Uh, but it'll fill it up to a certain point, maybe get two, three inches deep, and slowly recharge the aquifer system. If it gets above that level, instead of going back towards the road, it's going to make its way down to this swale system down here. Now, bear with me. So I'm going to break away from this one for a moment and show you right over here. So this is an access road right up over here that comes up uh, behind the terrace gar garden beds up there, the, that Hula Culture Terrace bed. And uh, our main road going up to Pond 1 is on the other side here. This is where we do all, all the composting over here. But as you can see, I use the natural slope of the property here to let the water come down and I make a little entrance point here going into Pond 2. So this is Pond 2, and Pond 2 we wanted to make so that at that side of it, it's, it's like a, 
an endless pool uh, design where where basically at, when you're at the side of the house there, you're looking this way, you're standing up s six foot tall, you just see where the top edge of this, this, uh, of this pond is. It's a pretty cool idea. But back over here, so we have this spillway coming, uh, the, this is not a gathering swale here, this is a drainage swale, a spillway. That gets narrower and narrower as we get down here to enter into the next cutaway uh, from the driveway. So right over there at the very end, I don't know how far easy you could see, but there's two pillars there. And we did a cutaway, we drop off the crown of the driveway, bring it in. Because I'm going against the direction of the contour of the, of the property, I'm bringing the water back this way. And I've got a small little drainage line right here that goes underneath this drive access area here and dumps into the pond right here. So I don't know if you can appreciate the water flowing there. So all of that all of that compost material that's up there goes into the first into this swale system that I just talked about here recharging this whole system here first. Then after that gets filled it goes into this charging system here which goes back fills all the way down here this other part all of these beds over here, when it gets high enough, that's when it goes subterranean here and then feeds into this pond. I hope this is all making sense. Now, since this whole area, so this is another part, this is a woody bed, uh, woody, it's all wood chipped on top of uh, the hugo culture, uh, I'm sorry, wood chipped here on you know, like a back to Eden sort of thing. And I'll go over that in another video. But the swale is just on the other side of this. It charges all of this soil. We got tremendous growth. And then it discharges into this one. And again, it gets much deeper as you're coming towards us because we're draining off the, cr the crown of the, of the driveway here. We come down here and then I've got an, uh, a line here and this is lower than the pond. So what we have here is we have the possibility if we didn't really create this correctly that pond water could have gone backwards here, overflowed this and gone into the driveway and lost it. But we decided to do this in such a way that this will go down into the next canal system right down there. We'll show you where in a minute. Here we are at pond two, and this isn't perfect yet, but hopefully you can appreciate. So here we are, the pond, this is the wide spillway here. And the water comes down all along in here, and it gently goes over this whole area. And I'll be planting and putting some more flat rocks along in here in future videos. But as you can see, the property just increases in elevation as we go in that direction. So, so far we've kept the water from downhill way over there. That corner right over there is about two feet lower than where I'm standing now. And we keep bringing the water back this way, bringing it up into these systems. And I have more to do up there in the woods in the future, and I'll show you how I'll do that. But now, where is this water going? Well, again, all of this water has some of the composting material in it as well. And we get down and we go through this spillway here, which is sort of a nice looking area here. So we have the, the lines on each side. And this goes down into, this, this is before our bioremediation system. So this is our soil capturing canal system. So the soil capturing canal system drains the Hugelkultur Terrace, which is up over there drains all of this area, everything way up there from the highest part of the property, drains all of the areas that we talked about all up in here, come down through pond two or through that subterranean line, and that subterranean line is right here. I gotta fix this because I banged into this with my excavator when I was working on this area here. This still isn't perfect yet. I still have some more work to get this perfect. 
And then along the driveway there, there's one more system that captures water off the driveway because my house is so much lower than the crown of the road and water used to come rushing down the driveway and used to go right into the house on those big like every 10 year big floods we'd have the big thaws after the big snowstorms so now we, we we tunnel all of this going all the way around and i have a an overflow system there that's not even necessary because even in a 500 year flood we would never get to the point where we'd get up to that point because we manage our discharge down there so well. So I'm gonna go down there next, hold on. So here's a canal system. This is a soil capturing canal system. Here's part of the Who culture edge right along in here. These, these are all logs buried all the way back, way back up to here, right up to where this tree is. Let's see if we can see any of the... So right in here you might, there goes my boy. You may see some of the logs here. Hank, easy! Some of the logs right here, buried underneath this whole area. So this whole area is Hoogalter bed. So there's probably up in here, there are only, there's only single layer of logs. But when we get down to here, the logs are, oh, probably about 10 layers in this area going right out to here. So this is a large Hugoculture Terrace, a future uh, growing area. Hank's enjoying this warm day. And there's our zone one gardening systems over there. There's where a lot of the trees are coming from to build all these Hugoculture features. And I'll be making another video on the Hugoculture features. So this area here, up there is where I'm going to be putting another pond there, and I'll be putting another pond up in there. Now, my ultimate goal is to see, can I have running water 10 months out of the year? So we took all the water from, from the road down that way, way up here where pond one is, way, way up in there. And now we're in our soil capturing system, which gets deeper and deeper as we get to this end. That's our Hugoculture Terrace there. Now we have our spillway here. And this is going into the bioremediation canicular system. So this is our canal system going into pond three. So this is where all the, the two, uh, there's different marginal plants that, that are where Hank is standing there right now. And then there's, so you see this block wall? Well, that block wall is similar to, if you come in this way three feet, another block wall, the same height there, same thing right here. And so we created this tiered system, canal system. And I'll talk more about that in future videos. But the water comes down, comes through the block wall here because it charges the whole system. And last year, you may recall a video where I cut in this system here to keep the water that, that comes out from around the house and all and redirect it. And again, I'm going against the slope of the property. I'm actually bringing it back east again, back around into the, the bioremediation canal system. And I'll go up there in a couple of minutes, but You can see now some of this because the, the garden beds are so charged and all and there is a little bit of water that comes down but it used to be that this water would flow right right down here and just soak this whole part of the property and then work its way into the pond four system but we'll go over here and we'll just look at this canal system briefly here just scared the musk out So this is where the second half of the canal system is. The first half of the canal system is on that side of the, the uh, excess road, and that goes into pond three over there where we're going next. But I wanted to show you where it drains here, 
And of course the, the uh, muskrat chewed up a lot of the insulation that I had from that floating system for the turtles during the summertime. Goes underneath this canal system out into uh, pond four, <coughs> which has the another part of the bioremediation system. That's a whole bioremediation system itself. Then it'll go into pond five, which is the one that we sealed with cardboard, or it's getting sealed with cardboard. All right. Let's go up over here for a minute. So all along in here, this is all, all of our asparagus beds that go all around. Cherry trees in here. Grapevines on the pergolas. Gosh, it's such a nice day. So here's part, you can look at pond three. Again, this is a very wooded pond. So this one will be the la one of the last ones. This will be the second last. Pond one will, will open up last because it's in such a shaded area. Pond three here will open up second last. Pond two will open up before that because it's much more sun exposure. But you can see this is all bioremediation systems in here. <laughs> and that's all the asparagus hanging over the, the sides there. Here's another small garden area here. These are all Hugo Culture Mounds videos I made years ago. I've learned so much about Hugo Culture doing these systems. It's just, and I just love the Hugo Culture systems. So this place is loaded with stone walls. And so I save all the bigger stones and I use them as uh, little retaining systems. I got little guys running around down there. Everybody's coming alive. But this is all coming from the woodland areas right up in here. So I'm going to put another pond, two ponds, one up over in here and one up over in there and connecting uh, canal systems. And I'll have some swale systems that I put in that are ma mainly for all the newts and all. Those ones that need transitional periods where the, where the areas actually dry up. So it'll have a spillway that's just one inch deep. Uh, in other words, the, the swale will only be one inch deeper than the, uh, than the spillway. So I haven't, I've, I've put in one temporary one and I won't show you that right now because I'd have to go into the woods. But that's where I've gotten a lot of the, uh, the newts back and all. And, uh, and they're just really populating the area wonderfully now. So you can see these are all the trees that have come down. I pulled out a bunch last fall right over there. Not sure it's showing up. But uh, these are all the ones that came down this winter during the storms. So this whole area was nothing but stones and so I've been turning this into a garden area. And I harvested a lot of the sand because this is a sand area as well. Now this is all pond, pond three again. And again, the ponds, we don't want to have oval or circular ponds if we can get away with it. If we want to have the biodiversity and have really healthy food forests and garden systems, vegetable garden systems, we need to bring in all of our animal and insect and amphibian and reptilian and aquatic species into the areas. We need to create welcoming homes, habitats, niches for every creature out there. So this will be a wonderful little shade garden and most of it will be for the wildlife in here. Because I finally figured out that if I feed the wildlife enough of the foods that they want, they don't do as much havoc in the other areas. Again, another evagination in the contour of this pond. Having it very interesting, uh, we, we see the diversity of, of species as a result of, of all of these different levels. So we have different, we have, uh, this originally was 18 feet deep. It's probably only like 14 feet deep at the lowest point now. And then we have a couple different layers here in depth as well. So that's pond three here. And you see there's little, it's, it's, it's very irregular margins. There's so much life that goes on around the margins. And in these areas, like here's some of the thyme plants, the extra thyme plants that I put in around here. So it's having redundancy increases your resilience 
tremendously if you have multiples in different locations in case there's an event that, that really damages things. Now I've got more, more to do. Since we put in the who culture pits and all, this whole uh, first food forest stays pretty darn charged all year long, even during the routes, the droughts. So the property dips that way, and I'm going to bring the water back that way one more time. And we'll go over here to pond four. Hopefully my battery's going to hold up a bit longer. So we're going through the first food forest now. There's the honey hut where the bees are. And this area is still a little bit too low. This is where I talked about how I have to do some more cuts. The soil just build up so much here because I don't mow it and because we're getting all the rich nutrients in here. And uh, so it used to drain right into the pond. Now it's bermed up there so high from the soil growth uh, abundance and each one of these 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 lines, these are all sea berries in here, uh, they end up building up more soil as well. And therefore, uh, we just aren't getting it drained into the pond. So I've got to do some little spillways into this area. So again, this is pond four. Sorry about the wind. Now pond four drains under under the earth right here. I got two different pipelines that go through. I think one's a 12 inch and one's a four inch, which handles it pretty darn well. It has, I've had the water go right up over the top here before, <laughs> but there were like vegetation plugging up some of the holes. Okay, so here we are. Now we're at Pond 5. This is the one that when you look at some of the aerial vid videos, you'll see lots of cardboard way over there in the side because we've been patching and patching and patching this pond. That little break in the ice there is where the water's been flowing, draining from Pond 4 over there. So it drains underground, comes across here, maintains the level in here, and then we have the spillway going into another swale system here. And we'll take a walk down here. Everything's still a little slick here, ice-wise. Hank! So, <clears throat> that way is west. That's where our winds come from. That's the lowest part of the property. It wants to go that way. I'm continually building that side of the property up. But now, I'm heading southeast with this, with this swale system. So I'm using the slope of the land that goes in this direction and just working our way back, going kitty corner, through the uh, first food forest here and working our system around. Sorry about the sun being over the, in the direction that it's at. <laughs> Now we're going to come around and wrap around into Pond 6. Pond 6 is really not a great name for it because Pond 6 is really all sand in this area. So I don't know that I'll ever be able to patch it with, even with the cardboard and all. But this is Pond 6 here. I really wanted this here because, and I've got to take care of some of these uh, small trees that have started growing up here. But the way I designed it was, well, during the winter time, this is all covered with snow, and so we get the reflection of, this, uh, of the sun on the snow and from the water during the summer months up onto the solar panels. Not much in the summertime, but it did give some. But this one actually goes dry. That little pond system that we put in as a test system that helps to drain the area. Well that's over there on that part of the property over there and there's a small line that comes around and creates a drain over there that en enters into pond six and this is a spillway. 
a nice wide spillway where we passively take that water nice and easy and I don't know if you can appreciate it, it's slowing nicely here and as we work our way around you'll see this goes down to pond 7 so we'll take a walk down there now So these are all the pavers that I had to take out from the front of the house this fall. Put on new, <laughs> put on new pallets so that I could do this. It's all icy here. I got to be careful going across this. Now. Why is there still snow in here? As we get to the point where those big trees there slow and break it up, every one of those vertical uh, trees deflects the airflow that the breaks the wind by about 15 degrees and it creates all these little vortices. And then we start getting drops of the snow all along in here. So this is all, oh, the other day when I came out here it was about two feet deep of compacted snow. So a big pain in the butt. There's a nursery area over there. That's all nursery area. You can see where all the snow accumulated here, where the wind starts to pick up again and deposits it right over here and makes it even deeper. So our little drainage swell that drains pond six, comes down here, goes into pond seven. And again, this one's partially in the shade as well. Now the property really drops off down in there. And I'll take a walk with a GoPro camera and see what we can do. Yesterday it was so dark, so foggy. When I shot it, it didn't come out that well. Now here's a, a drive-through drainage system here. So we dug this. So we dug this uh, the swale out going across here, but instead of having it ra rather uh, uh, thicker walls, uh, deeper, a deeper canal and narrower walls to the swale, we widened it out a quite a bit here so I can easily drive through with the equipment getting down back. And I don't know if you can appreciate it, but the property really drops off down, down there where it heads towards the beaver pond. So this canal system comes right around in here. And that's the spillway right over there. And it goes down into the woods. Now I have more work to do to bring that water back around, back east again, as we go down south, as we go uh, more south, we want to bring it, uh, use that slope, bring it to the east, put another aquatic system over there, and then charge it back again this way. Keep zigzagging this around the property. And this is another drainage uh, swell. So at the base of this spot right here is a four inch drainage pipe that drains the perimeter and, and floor of the root cellar right up over there. So we never have flooding in there. So at the floor level of the sugar shack, if you go down just over eight foot, because the walls are eight foot there, uh, we go just around the, the, the base of the, the footer and below the footer for the uh, drainage system. That's where this is. So this water level right now isn't back feeding up into there. The, the floor is completely dry. But you see how deceptive it is. The slope of the, of the property of though goes this way. It's deceptive. You know, we're only a hundred foot from the sugar shack and here's the water level right here you think geez that floor has got to be flooded down there but it just isn't so now i'm going to head down and back i don't know how much longer our battery is going to last here Lots of trees down here, lots of limbs. These are totes for draining the woods someday when I 
get ready to do the, uh, the maple syrup. Just not enough hours in my day to get everything done the way I'd like to get it done. And so we're going down through the woods now. I'm not taking you where it spills over. Because I doubt my battery's going to last that much longer. So in the future, if I still have the energy and the time <clears throat> during dry seasons, I'll be installing chinampas going out like little fingers going out, and you'd see part of one system we started there. But there'll be chinampas going right out these systems here in the future. Let's see if I can get out here to where the, the first level of the beaver dam is, at least. So here I'm walking across one of the beaver dams. This is such a, a rich part of the property where the beaver have taken this low part of the property and turned it into such an abundant, rich, resource amazing ecosystems <clears throat> and they've created a marginal effect here with multiple edges trying to navigate going across the top here it's had some damage over the winter months and see where it's spilling through here into the next area and there's a whole second dam there and there's there's multiple dams working their way down this whole system. It's just amazing how such a wonderful job the beavers have done. And pretty soon some of the 
young ones are going to be leaving leaving mom and dad and they'll make their way up to the ponds around the food forest and see if there's enough trees and all. It's just amazing. It's amazing how much water is flowing through here. Now this is coming not just from our property but it's coming from all around that whole area. So much of the water is working its way through here and it's creating an, its own natural bioremediation system. The wetlands are so important, so valuable, yet so many people really don't realize the benefit and how much they're cleaning our water. And water is one of the most precious things that we have on Earth. So it looks like my battery's just about to die here, so I'm gonna stop the video right here, make my way back, and I may take a hike with a GoPro since the sun's getting up there a little bit before the rain comes. Oh, I see a beaver. I must, must have disturbed him there. He's right up on the margin. So I'll end this right here. So I at least wanted to show you a bit of our, our ponds, our swales, our spillways, and how we're capturing as much water as we can on the property bringing it back, put in our own bioremediation systems, installed our own soil capturing systems because we let nature do all of its abundant work that, that, that goes on all automatically. We're feeding all these wonderful food webs, we're building soil, we're capturing carbon, we're using that solar power from that huge solar system behind us over there. And uh, well, it's just amazing what, what nature does, and if we learn to work with nature, anything's possible. So, from down here at the dam, have a wonderful day, folks. If you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and uh, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye now.